it is the state trying to, to silence us because they see Kenyans are angry, they are aware we are angry, and we are calling more Kenyans to action. This is our country, the only way we can save it is if we unite together. The reason they are uh, um, coming after each individual who is being seen to be vocal is because they feel that you are still in a state of uh, fear or you feel like you're helpless, you're not helpless. And we are going to remain strong as a country and we are going to also remain strong with the 20 people who are today in court in Kibera who again who have protested some of the serious um, abuse and misuse of our resources that is happening in this country. So let me take this opportunity to um, ask you to... ...on Twitter are doing because a lot of the things that are happening in this country, if they were not exposed online, Kenyans would not know. And it is also a fact that even the traditional media tends to pick a lot of your stories from what is reported online because your freedoms have also been a bit shaken and we know and we can see it that at times you are unable to, to say some of the things we are saying online because you fear for your positions as media houses. We have seen the government come at you. We actually led a protest uh, when you guys were shut down and some of us were also arrested at that time. So they're not just coming for citizens, they're coming for you also as the media. Most people working in the community are protecting themselves. They are putting on masks to protect themselves against the police. So that shows you how the police is the pandemic. That's how the community takes it. Every day from 8 o'clock, people are arrested in their numbers, in our slums and informal settlements. They are never taken to court. They just have to pay bribes. So what I like to ask the government, one, they stopped movement, cessation of movements. They did not care. They added a few times. They did not care how the livelihood of people was going to be affected. At least in the first phase, there were some measures. What, what happened in this phase? You stop hotel workers, you stop, you stop bar owners, you stop travelers, you stop transporters, and you don't care what they're going to eat. And you don't expect those people to rise up. At the same time, you increase the prices of fuel. That increases the prices of whenever people are feeling that things are not right. Whenever people are feeling that the loans that are being taken are not, are not you being utilized correctly, people will rise up. And we will continue rising up and we will make sure that the voices of the people is not stopped at any moment. Personally, I've been to court so many times. I've had five cases, only on protests. So what does that tell you? A government that cannot prosecute people who steal our billions, but can prosecute people who try to speak out. And I would like to tell the journalists, you need to be very careful, and you need to join this struggle, because you are also not safe. The next phase is you. Whenever you start airing press conferences like this, they'll start calling you and you'll either lose your job or you'll end up in jail. Because it all, always starts like this. So I'll call upon Kenyans to rise up. The constitution has not been suspended. We know if you want to do a protest, make sure you have a, a sanitizer or water to wash your hands. Make sure you keep social distance. Make sure you put on masks. But the protest must continue the way Uhuru is continuing to do his meetings and the way Uhuru is continuing to meet the IMF to get more loans. Those meetings have not been suspended. The constitution has not been suspended. Asante Sar. Protesting, or not even protesting, for sitting down together uh, at different venues uh, to discuss about the state of human rights, the state of governance in Kenya. So we have 20 in one week, plus Motebi, now becomes 21 persons that are being targeted. Now these 20, these 20 were targeted because of having a physical gathering to question the state of this country. Motebi's case represents hundreds, if not millions, of Kenyans that have only, only one space in which to protest, which is the online space. 
to effectively what the judge, uh, the magistrate did, was caution every Kenyan that you cannot meet physically, you cannot even communicate online 